This is the motto of the show Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, the goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God by the believing people who will hold the truth in Jesus Christ's name. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase with iron heel and iron hand the Roman poles rule the land those ignorant of history may be swept into apostasy we won't be loved by Rome, sweet lie With fifty million reasons why Salvation is by faith alone In Christ alone, by grace alone A sovereign God give faith to man Salvation's in the Maker's hand This gospel offends Rome today they offer up another way, a counterfeit, a compromise. Beware the ancient papal lie with such a cloud of witnesses who by grace died in their Lord. Recall their memory to say, by the same faith we live today. Hello and welcome everybody to another broadcast on Hour of the Truth. First of all, my apologies because it's been quite some time since i done another broadcast on Hour of the Truth, but you have to know that a few weeks ago I was doing a very important and interesting reading with Tom Fress that I recorded and wanted to make a show out of it. But, um, yeah, when all was said and done, when everything was read and done and discussed, I saw that the recording did not take place, so I missed that broadcast. And I've been very, very, very busy uh, on my YouTube channel, as you probably know. I finished the book Babylon Mystery Religion by Ralph Woodrow, the recantation of that. I've been preparing other stuff and... Um, my friends Brett Norman and Jesse Vessel are so busy at the moment with themselves and with their own YouTube channel and with their work and everything that they didn't have the time to appear on another show with me. And Tom Fress from Inquisition Update also is uh, very much involved in doing some private work that he has no time to attend to the show on Hour of the Truth. So, in the last week I prepared another reading of An Understandable History of the Bible from Samuel C. Gipp. And you know that touches now, in, in, in that book, the subject we are touching now right there is about the Jesuits. And by doing research on that I, <laughs> I have the problem that I always get uh, a little bit more information than I initially asked for. <laughs> so. While doing that research, I stumbled upon a few other things, also because I'm preparing another book reading, which I will not tell here right now, because there I will make an own teaser video um, that will probably even out before Hour of the Truth, so uh, you know about that new book that I'm reading. And by doing research on that, I stumbled upon something that deals with the same subject as Chapter 1 of the book that I'm going to read now, Behind the Dictators. Um, which deals with the subject of uh, Jesuits, Jews and Freemasons. Very, very interesting. And so, 
why, uh, while I was doing research on that, I found this wonderful article here by Daryl Eberhardt. And um, I remember Daryl Eberhardt as being in, uh, held in a, a very positive position by Tom Fress from Inquisition Update. And that's why I read this article that I found on a, on a website. The link I will give you, of course, in the description box of this video. And I decided to take this um, article that he wrote and um, we'll read uh, on that right now here in Hour of the Truth and that's why I've chosen to read this and also to make absolutely clear where the deception comes from. I am not the only one telling you that it is the Roman Catholic Church, <coughs> that it is the Order of the Jesuits, that it is the Papal Knight Orders like uh, the Knights of Malta, where I made an own video on uh, some time ago uh, during Nothing But The Truth um, that you can look up to understand more. I will come back to that later at the end of this article anyway to mention that. Um, the Knights of St. John, the Order of the Garter and uh, Order of the Bath and all these papal orders are really under the control of the Jesuit order on the top and they are responsible for this. But today you will hear this not from my mouth, you will hear that from the mouth of Daryl Eberhardt, who is um, the editor of Tackling the Tough Topics. And uh, I am dealing here with an uh, article that he wrote initially to, uh, among others, Eric John Phelps in June 2006 and is what up uh, was updated once in October 20th, 2007. And he refers to his website toughissues.org, but that is a website that you will not find anymore. And if you want to know uh, the reasons why Daryl Eberhardt is not on the internet today anymore, then you can turn to Tom Fress, and you know how to contact him, uh, tom at cwaves.us, and you can ask him because he can explain that all to you. Uh, he explained that to me once, but I'm not uh, doing this show one hour of the truth to tell you all about that. Uh, if you want that information, you can contact Tom, Tom himself, and I'm quite sure that he will give you the information that you uh, are looking for. Now, the hour of the truth show that I'm making here is called It is Simply Amazing. Why is it called it is simply amazing? Well, because truth actually is simply amazing. And truth is always to be found in the Bible, the 1611 authorized version of the King James Bible. And it is also simply amazing, and this is probably why Daryl Eberhardt called this email, this article that he wrote, it is simply amazing, because it is simple to find out who really rules when you do your own research and when you look behind the smoke screens everybody is setting up for you. And this is actually what this article is dealing with. So I am now reading this and of course here and there I am also submitting my own comments to that as you are used to. And I hope we will have a wonderful show on Hour of the Truth on Daryl Eberhardt's article It is Simply Amazing. What I'm about to tell you is simply amazing. A sizable portion of the alternative media tells us that quote unquote, the Jews, i.e. the Masonic Zionist Jews, run the New World Order to include banking, the current US administration, the United States Congress, Hollywood and of course the mainstream media. Well, let's first just discuss Hollywood and the mainstream media. For if the Masonic Zionist Jews do indeed control Hollywood and the mainstream media, then I am very confused. Well, but you know, of course we all know the mainstream media is not run by the Jews, nor is Hollywood, as I, Jörg, have already proven in other videos, but let's hear what Daryl has to say about it. You may be asking, why are you confused? Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Dear reader or dear listener, the greatest murderer of Jews over the past 1000 plus years has been the Roman Catholic Church. 
the Roman Catholic Church has also been the biggest murderer of independent Christian groups, for example, the Albigensian, the Valdensian, and the Hussites. The biggest murderer of Protestants, i.g. the French Huguenots, Irish Protestants, and Bohemian Protestants, and German Protestants, and one of the biggest murderers of Orthodox Christians, for example, the genocide carried out against Serb Orthodox Christians in Roman Catholic-controlled fascist Croatia in the 1940s, and we will dive into that later in this article too. If the mainstream media and Hollywood are run by Masonic Zionist Jews, then why aren't they exposing the Roman Catholic Church's extensive support of fascist states that slaughtered Jews in Europe during World War II? Now, first let's examine how uh, just a small portion of the well-documented history of Roman Catholic mass murder of Jews. Please consider the following quotations. We read from Dave Hunt's book, A Cup of Trembling, which was published in 1995. Quote, Jews were slaughtered by the thousands all across Europe as the Roman Catholic Crusaders made their way into the quote-unquote Holy Land to recover it from both Jews and Turks for the Roman Catholic Church. Unquote. Another quote comes from Ron Hembry, A Daily Joy, page 272. Quote, One of history's most malevolent persons died on this day, September 16th, in 1498. Thomas de Torquemada, which, who I also address in the book Behind the Dictators. Thomas de Torquemada, as Roman Catholic Inquisitor General of Spain, ordered more than 10,000 people to be burned at the stake because they didn't agree with his religious views. He used the Inquisition for religious and political reasons, believing punishment of so-called heretics and non-Christians, chiefly Jews and Muslims, was the only way to achieve political unity in Spain. Greatly feared and hated by millions, he persuaded the Spanish King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella to rid Spain of Jews. More than a million families were driven from Spain during that time. The country never recovered from the resulting decline. Unquote. And again from De Fant, Cup of Trembling, we read, quote, Roman Catholic priest Monsignore Father Joseph Tiso, I mean, no, call no man father, but that is their title. Joseph Tiso, ruler of Slovakia's Nazi puppet regime of 1939 through 1945, sent that tiny country's Jewish population of 70,000 to the extermination camps in Poland. Unquote. And from the same book, A Cup of Trembling, by Dave Hunt, we read on page 158, quote, to a Jew, Hitler and Italian fascist dictator Mussolini were quote-unquote Christians. In fact, they were Roman Catholics from birth. And, of course, we always have to make a distinction between someone who is Roman Catholic and someone who is a Christian. Because Roman Catholics are not Christians. In fact, they were Roman Catholics from birth, and in spite of their horrendous crimes against humanity, they never were excommunicated from their church. The same was true of Nazi SS chief Heinrich Himmler, and many others in the Nazi hierarchy. Indeed, the Roman Catholic Church has a long history of, persecuting, of persecution, expulsion and slaughter of Jews, to which Hitler referred in justifying the Holocaust. End quote. And here is some of that historical record of Roman Catholic slaughter of Jews. We dive a little bit uh, in the history and we start with point number one in 1095 AD. Pope Urban II, who was Pope between 1088 and 1099 AD, proclaims the First Crusade. 
Here is what historian Will Durant has written concerning his pa this papacy instigated murder spree. Quote, when in 1095 Pope Urban II proclaimed the First Crusade, some Christians, please understand these to be Roman Catholics, thought it desirable to kill the Jews in Europe before proceeding so far to fight Turks in Jerusalem. Godfrey of Bouillon, having accepted the leadership of the crusade, announced that he would avenge the blood of Jesus upon the Jews, leaving not one of them alive, and his companions proclaimed their intention to kill all Jews who would not accept Christianity. Read Roman Catholic version of this so-called Christianity. False Christianity. Meaning, if you do not turn to the belief system of the Roman Catholic Church, you will be killed. In 1096 AD, Roman Catholic Crusaders slaughter half the Jews of Worms in Germany on their way through that town. In 1099 AD, Roman Catholic Crusaders sent on a holy mission by the Pope of Rome, i.e. Pope Urban II, who we already mentioned, make it to the walls of Jerusalem. Upon capturing the city, the Crusaders hurt the Jews into the synagogue and set it on fire. These Roman Catholic Crusaders butcher almost all of the city's inhabitants, men, women, children alike, Jews, Muslims and probably even a few Christians and these are Bible-believing, Sabbath-keeping Christians, not Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholic Crusaders had earlier slaughtered the inhabitants of the city of Antioch in southern Turkey, men, women and children alike, when they had captured it. In 1236 AD, Roman Catholic Crusaders slaughtered Jews in the Anjou and Poitou regions of western France. Historian Will Durand tells us, quote, Roman Catholic Crusaders invaded the Jewish settlements of Anjou and Poitou. These Roman Catholic Crusaders bade all Jews be baptized. When the Jews refused, the Roman Catholic Crusaders trampled 3,000 of them to death under their horses' roof. Hoof, unquote. 1234 AD. All Jews in Belitz, Germany, which is near Berlin, are burned alive by Roman Catholics. According to historian Will Durant, their alleged crime was that, quote, some of them had defiled a consecrated host, unquote. 1298 AD. All Jews in Rottingen are burned to death by Roman Catholics. According to Durant, their alleged crime was, quote, desecrating a sacramental wafer, unquote. Now in the 14th century, that is the 1300s, the Roman Catholic Church blames the Jews for the Black Death, probably the bubonic plague. Here is what author Dave Hunt has written in his book A Woman Rides the Beast from 1994 concerning this time in history. Quote, from the time the popes ruled Rome, the Jews' plight was far more grievous than it had ever been at the hands of the pagan rulers. Pagans had blamed every disaster upon Christians. Now the Roman Catholic Church blamed all on the Jews. Accused of causing the Black Death, Jews were rounded up and hanged, burned and drowned by the thousands in revenge, as we read on page 267 of his book A Woman Rides the Beast. By the way, a book that Tom Fress read on Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio, so whenever you feel free to support First Amendment Radio, by giving a donation of, I don't know, $7 a month or something, you get access to the archives and you can get Tom Fress's reading of the book A Woman Rides the Beast in, from Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio and listen to his wonderful explanation of this monumental work from Dave Hunt yourself. 
and in the future I have plans to read that book myself too, but that will be in German. 1481 AD Kickoff of the Spanish Inquisition The hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church choreographs an orgy of tor torture and burning people alive, called the Inquisition. Though it is aimed initially and primarily at Jews and Muslims, the Inquisition also targets those Christians whose beliefs are not completely in line with the Roman Catholic Church's doctrines and practices, meaning Bible-believing, Sabbath-keeping Christians, like me and like a lot of my listeners are. That Inquisition, people, has not stopped. It is called today the Congregation of the Faith, the name has changed, and they are not having dungeons anymore, officially, although look at Guantanamo Bay and all the secret CIA dungeons they have all over the world, they still do have it, but of course this is not exposed. So why do we have this uh, organization in the world anyway that is called Amnesty International that cares for things like this? They do never expose these because they are controlled by Roman Catholics, of course. And of course all the wars, the First World War, the Second World War, the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, and of course the war on terror that we have right now. President George W. Bush said it for himself. This crusade are words that he used. Well, we are speaking about the Spanish Inquisition in the f at the first, at this moment, between 1481 and 1482, in the first two years of the Spanish Inquisition. You know that after the founding of the Jesuit order, when you followed my book reading of Rulers of Evil, you know that in 1542 the Jesuits agreed on the terms of taking over the Inquisition from the Dominicans and from that moment on the Jesuits were responsible for the Inquisition. And the last but one Pope that we have now, Benedict XVI, was long years the chairman of the Congregation of the Faith, what the Inquisition is called today. But let me return to this letter. Okay? In the first two years, meaning between 1481 and 1483, at least 2,000 individuals are burned alive. Again, author Dave Hunt in his book A Woman Rides the Beast from 1994 states, quote, In Spain alone, the number of condemned exceeded 3 million, with about 300,000 burned at the stake alone, during the length of the Spanish Inquisition. You can read that on page 79. Hunt is quoting from R. W. Thompson's book, The Papacy and the Civil Power. Now we come to a little bit more recent history between 1941 and 1945 AD. The Jewish Holocaust occurs in Nazi-Fascist controlled Europe. Up to 6 million Jews are murdered and starved to death. Roman Catholic involvement in this Holocaust is extensive. Roman Catholic German Knight of Malta Franz von Papen is one of the top players involved in putting Adolf Hitler into power. The German Roman Catholic Center Party's endorsement of and anonymous vote for the Enabling Act of March 1933 is crucial giving Adolf Hitler the two-thirds majority he needs to assume dictatorial powers in Germany with the Enabling Act. And you over there in the United States of America had the same after 9-11 with the so-called Patriot Act and the later coming National Defense and Author Authorization Act, NDAA. Is the United States of America today into turning into a Fourth Reich, into a new Nazi fascist regime? You bet. Jesuit father Himmler, and we are talking here of the uncle of Heinrich Himmler, the chief of the Nazi SS. Jesuit father Himmler is a top officer in the Nazi SS, which is admittedly modeled after the Jesuit order. 
and we will come to that later in this article. A number of Roman Catholic priests put on the black uniforms of the Nazi SS. The Vatican signs concordats with Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy. You know, the German concordat was signed 20th of July 1933 and is still in working today. Although they tell the Germans that they have been denazified and all the so called Nazi laws are not working anymore. But the Concordat was never ever deleted. Roman Catholics are installed as puppet dictators in a number of fascist countries. For example, in Slovakia, the Jesuit priest Monsignor Tiso is installed as dictator. Additionally, Roman Catholic Knights of Malta head up three powerful intelligence agencies during World War II. Wild William Donovan heads the American OSS, which later becomes the CIA. Catholics in action. German General <coughs> Reinhard Gehlen heads Nazi intelligence on the Eastern Front and Russian Anton Turkul heads Soviet intelligence and uses Jesuit priests for his couriers. By using elements within the warring fractions, the Vatican is able to ensure the slaughter of large numbers of its favorite targets. Jews, Protestants in northern Germany and Prussia, and Orthodox Christians. Jews, Protestants and Orthodox Christians are the favorite targets of the Vatican. At the end of the war, the Vatican helps many Nazi fascist war criminals to escape via the Vatican Red Lines, hiding them in convents and monasteries in Europe until they can safely escape to such countries as the United States of America, Operation Paperclip, Argentina, Chile and other South American countries through the Vatican Red Lines. Again 1941 through 1945, the Vatican's Holocaust occurs in Croatia. And there is a book written from Avro Manhattan about that subject alone. Through primarily directed, though, sorry, though primarily directed against Serb Orthodox Christians, much smaller numbers of Jews and Gypsies are also targeted. This monstrous, barbaric and savage religious genocide is planned, orchestrated and conducted by Roman Catholic clergymen, mainly Franciscan monks, friars and priests, along with several high-ranking Jesuits. Roman Catholic Croatian Führer Ante Pavelic teams up with high-ranking Roman Catholic prelates such as Jesuit Monsignor Aloysius Stepinac, who is Archbishop of Zagreb, and Jesuit Monsignor Ivan Sarek, Archbishop of Sarajevo, to use Roman Catholic Eustachy military units to torture and butcher from 600,000 to one million innocent Serb Orthodox Christian men, women, elderly and children. This religious genocide includes the most brutal forms of torture, forced conversions, burning people alive, raping and murdering girls and women, Impaling young children alive to stakes, gouging out the eyes of victims to make necklaces, starving children to death, burying victims alive, crucifying Orthodox priests to wooden doors and some other atrocities that I do not feel should be written in an article. You can read books about that. Roman Catholic clergymen not only frequently advise the Roman Catholic Eustachy military units on how to torture and murder, but also actually participate in the savagery. A Franciscan monk by name of quote-unquote Father Miroslav Filip Filipovich serves as the cruel camp commandant at Jezenovac, one of the worst of the concentration camps. And there comes a little note here. 
the above historical items were taken from uh, his uh, TTT newsletter, from uh, my new TTT newsletter entitled Bloody Hands and Wicked Hearts, that is posted on the website toughissues.org, which you cannot access today anymore. So I don't know if that article of the TTT newsletter still is somewhere available. I urge everyone to do his own research in this regard too. The Roman Catholic Church has for many decades tried to whitewash her involvement in agitating, inspiring and actually orchestrating and leading the persecution and slaughter of Jews throughout history and especially her involvement in such atrocities during World War II. Please consider the following quote by author Dave Hunt, in which he analyzes the Roman Catholic Church's modern condemnation of anti-Semitism from the Vatican Second Council, which, as you know, took place between 1962 and 1965. Quote, Nothing could be more hypocrit hypocritical than this statement by the Roman Catholic Church's Vatican II Council condemning anti-Semitism. The Roman Catholic Church strongly condemns hatreds, persecutions, anti-Semitism, but only by others, not by herself. No mention is made of the fact that during the many centuries when the Roman Catholic Church held sway over society, ruling even kings and emperors, she was the inspirer and perpetrator of an anti-Jewish bias and as bad as anything the world has ever seen. Unquote from A Cup of Trembling by Dave Hunt, page 165. Indeed, Roman Catholic involvement in helping to foment World War II, then supporting Roman Catholic controlled fascist regimes in Europe at, during that time, has been well documented. Please carefully consider the following quotations that show Roman Catholic involvement to the maximum in World War II, involvement that resulted in the death of millions of both Jews and Christians, Bible-believing, Sabbath-keeping Christians alike. Quote, the public is practically unaware of the overwhelming responsibility carried by the Vatican and its Jesuits in the starting of two world wars a situation which may be explained in part by the gigantic finances at the disposition of the Vatican and its Jesuits, giving them power in so many spheres, especially since the last conflict. Unquote. This comes from Edmond Paris, or Edmond Paris, The Secret History of the Jesuits, page 9. The Jesuits in control of Adolf Hitler's occultic and homosexual Third Reich installed puppet dictators throughout Europe. They were first Bavarian Germany and the Third Reich Adolf Hitler from 1889 through 1945. Second Benito Mussolini born and died 1883 through 1945. Three Vichy France Henri Philippe Pétain, born 1856, died 1951. 4. Spain, Francisco Franco, born 1892, died 1975. 5. Austria, Seyes Inquart. 6. Poland, Frank. 7. Slovakia, Jesuit priest Monsignor Tiso, who we already mentioned. 8. Croatia, Anti Pavelic, who we also have mentioned. And nine, not to forget, in the country that I live in, Belgium, de Grel, who was the founder of the today party called, I don't know, uh, CVP, it's a Christian party on the right wing. And he was a Jesuit controlled dictator in Belgium during the siege of Germany in Belgium during the Second World War. All these Roman Catholic, Jesuit-controlled, Jew-hating dictators were loyal to the greatest war criminal of all, Papal Caesar, Pius XII, and his master, Jesuit superior general Vladimir Ledokowski. This quote comes from the book of Vatican Assassins by Eric John Phelps, edition 2001, 
page 478. I do not endorse Eric John Phelps, and I will go into that later, but the book that he wrote, Vatican Assassins, is a wonderful study for anyone who needs some history knowledge. I can assure you that. Now, the Nazi Third Reich is the first power which not only recognizes, but which puts into practice the high principles of the papacy. And who was the initiator of this quote? Franz von Papen, German Roman Catholic Knight of Malta, stated this on January 14, 1934. He was Vice Chancellor under Hitler. He was the person who promoted Hitler to the position of Chancellor after the elections in 1933. He didn't want the position because Hitler was chosen as the puppet from Superior General Black Pope Vladimir Ledakowski, not Franz von Papen. Franz von Papen survived the Second World War, survived a small punishment from the Nuremberg trials and lived, I think, until 1959. We get later a little bit more information on Franz von Papen during this letter from Daryl Eberhardt. Continuing, Jesuit Roman Catholic Cardinal Initzer, Archbishop of Vienna in Austria, says, quote, The Roman Catholic priests and the faithful must unhesitatingly uphold the great German state, meaning Nazi Germany, and the Führer, meaning Adolf Hitler, who struggled to set up Nazi Germany's power, honor and prosperity is in accord, is in accord with the wishes of providence, i.e. the Vatican. Unquote. Another quote from Radio Vatican, June 1940. The declaration of Roman Catholic Jesuit Monsignor, French spelling uh, Monsignor Tyso, chief of the Slovakian state, stating his intention to build up Slovakia according to a Christian, meaning Roman Catholic plan, has the full approval of the Holy See, i.e. the Vatican. Unquote. Well, the next quote comes from Edmond Paris, Edmond Paris, the Vatican against Europe. I have learned most of all from the Jesuit order. So far there has been nothing more imposing on earth than the hierarchical organization of the Roman Catholic Church. A good part of that organization I have transported direct to my own Nazi party. The Roman Catholic Church must be held up as an example. I will tell you a secret. I am founding an order, the Nazi SS. In Heinrich Himmler, who would become the head of the Nazi SS, I see our Ignatius de Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. This quote comes from Adolf Hitler, who was the Roman Catholic Nazi leader of Germany from 1933 through 1945. And you can read this, as I said already earlier, in the Vatican against Europe, and I think also in the Secret History of the Jesuits, both books by Edmond Paris. Quote, the Roman Catholic priests in fascist Croatia in the 1940s changed their robes for the uniforms of the dreaded Roman Catholic Eustachy, militia and later the army, killer squads, and let the most barbaric, brutal raids upon those Serb Orthodox Christian people and practiced satanic torture never before known in this century. We are not talking about 800 years ago. We are talking 1940. Quote taken from Jack Chick, 
Smoke Screens, 1983 Publishing, page 25. The next quote comes from Monica Farrell, who wrote Ravening Wolves. Quote, this is the record of torture and murder committed in Europe in 1941 through 1945 by an army of Roman Catholic actionists known as the Eustachi, led by monks and priests and even participated in by nuns. Unquote. So even nuns were used in the Inquisition in Croatia at that time. Most of fascist Croatia's Roman Catholic clergy were fanatically behind Croatian Supreme Leader Anti Pavelic and his unbelievably evil regime. Medals were even given by Pavelic to nuns and priests, thus betraying the fact that many of them played active roles alongside the Eustachi military. Franciscan monks in particular joined Eustachi battalions. This was a quote from a Woman Writes the Beast, Dave Hunt's book, page 301. And the next quote it goes as follows. Roman Catholic religious orders gave total and continuous support to the Roman Catholic Eustachy. Before the establishment of the independent state of Croatia in 1941, their convents were hiding places for the Eustachy terrorists. There were concealed Eustachy presses and were this depositories of Eustachy subversive literature and even of hand grenades, guns and dynamite. The Eustachy carried out their pre-World War II terrorist activities screened by members of Roman Catholic religious orders, male and female. Nuns prepared uniforms, emblems and medical equipment for Eustachy detachments." Unquote. And this comes from the Vatican's Holocaust, the book I was earlier referring to from Avro Manhattan, published 1986, page 99. And another quote, again from Dave Hunt and A Woman Rides the Beast. Once Croatian Supreme Leader Anti Pavelic took power, Jesuit Archbishop Eleusius Stepanek issued a pastoral letter according, uh, ordering the Croatian clergy to support the new Eustacia state. The involvement of Roman Catholic clergy either in active participation or in blessing the Eustachy run Holocaust is well documented. One Franciscan monk, Miroslav Filipovic, headed the Jesonovic concentration camp for two years, during which time he directed the extermination of no less than 100,000 victims, mostly Serbian Orthodox. Jesuit Archbishop Stepinac headed the committee which was responsible for forcible conversions to Roman Catholicism under threat of death and was also the supreme military apostolic vicar of the Eustachy army which effected to slaughter of those who failed to convert to Roman Catholicism. Jesuit Archbishop Stepanek was known as Father Confessor to the Eustachy and continually bestowed the blessing of Holy Mother Church upon its members and actions." Unquote. And from the same book we read on page 303 and 304. Quote, Estimates of the, numbers of the number of victims of the Vatican's Holocaust in Croatia in the 1940s exceeded 1 million. This is probably a realistic figure. Yugoslavia in its war crimes trials estimates that from 700 to 900,000 victims were tortured and put to death. In the two dozen concentration camps within Croatia and tens of thousands never reached the camps. Many were Jews, but most were Serbians of Orthodox faith who were, uh, who were given the choice of conversion to Roman Catholicism or death. Yeah? So you either convert to Roman Catholicism or you're dead. Both in Yugoslavia and the Ukraine, Roman Catholic priests, bishops and cardinals with the full knowledge of the Vatican participated in and gave their blessing to some of the bloodiest and most barbaric massacres of the war aimed at giving Roman Catholicism control of these regions." Unquote. From Defant, as I stated. The next quote comes from Edmond Paris, The Secret History of the Jesuits, page 139. Quote, 
By a providential synchronism, when Italian dictator Mussolini seized power in Italy thanks to Don Sturzo, who was a Jesuit and chief of the Catholic Party, then it was at the same uh, <coughs> then it was at the same time that Monsignor Seipel, a Jesuit, became Chancellor of Austria. He held that position until 1929, with an interregnum of two years, and during those decisive years he led the Austrian interior politics on to the reactionary and clerical road. His successors followed him on that road, which led to the absorption of that country into the German bloc. The bloody repression of working class uprisings earned him, meaning Jesuit Seipel, the nickname um, Kein milder Cardinal, which means in English, Cardinal without a mercy. Unquote. And from the daily press, from the second of, no, from the ninth of February, nineteen thirty-five, in the British United Press, we read: quote, "It is believed that the Pope, Pope Pius the eleventh, uh, is this year." will offer these services to Signor Benito Mussolini through the Jesuit father Pietro Tacci Venturi, who is often consulted by Mussolini on important matters. Unquote. And again, another quote. You see, this article is not so much about the meaning of Daryl Eberhardt, it is about the research that he did in other books who also whether rely on historic accounts, research, and other books of other historians, all the way. So this is all documented, because an undocumented book you cannot really publish, because no one will be found to publish it for you. Nazi SS chief Heinrich Himmler's Catholicism was very important to him. He attended church regularly, took communion, confessed, and prayed as stated from G. S. Graeber in The History of the SS. Adolf Hitler himself was a Roman Catholic. Hitler had been reared in a traditional Roman Catholic family. As a child and youngster, little Adolf had regularly attended Mass, had served as an acolyte during Mass, had hoped to become a priest, and had attended school in the Benedictine Monastery at Lambach in Austria. As an adult, Hitler remained a member in good standing in the Roman Catholic Church state. At no time did officials of the Roman Catholic Church state excommunicate him. When the German military plotted to assassinate Hitler in 1944, you know Stauffenberg at that time, and the plot failed, the Roman Catholic Church state in Germany offered a Te Deum to thank God for the Führer's escape. Unquote from John W. Robbins in Ecclesiastical Megalomania, 1999 and 2006, publishing in page 167. And now we hear from the, mouse, from the horse's mouth itself, Walter Schellenberg, who was the chief of the Nazi Sicherheitsdienst. He said, quote, the SS had been organized by Heinrich Himmler according to the principles of the Jesuit order. The rules of service and spiritual exercises prescribed by Ignatius de Loyola constituted a model which Heinrich Himmler strove carefully to copy. Absolute obedience was the supreme rule. Every order had to be executed without comment. Unquote. Now coming to the preceding quote from the author here is a Roman Catholic priest put on the black uniforms of the Nazi SS serving especially in the SS Central Security Service CSS. The next quote is from the secret history of the Jesuits from Edmond Paris page 139 quote listen carefully in the early days of may 1936 german knight of malta franz von papen entered into secret negotiations with dr schusnick the austrian chancellor working on his weak point 
even though he was a devout Roman Catholic, and showed him how advantageous a reconciliation with Nazi leader Adolf Hitler would be as far as the Vatican's interests were concerned. The argument may seem odd, but Schusnick was very devout and von Papen was the Pope's German Chamberlain, meaning a high official in certain royal courts. Not surprisingly, it was the Pope's secret Chamberlain in Germany, Knight of Malta, Franz von Papen, who led the whole affair, which ended on the 11th of March 1938, with the resignation of the pious Schusnick, pupil of the Jesuits, in favor of Seyss Inquart, chief of the Austrian Nazis. The following day, March 12, 1938, the German troops entered Austria and the puppet government of Seyss Inquart proclaimed the union of the country to the Nazi German Third Reich. The event was welcomed by an enthusiastic declaration of Vienna's Archbishop, Cardinal Initzer, a Jesuit. Unquote. And from page 168 from the same book we read, the German author Walter Hagen gives also this secret information. The Jesuit superior general, Count Halke von Ledokowski, was ready to organize on the common basis of anti-communism some collaboration between the German secret service and the Jesuit order. As a result, with the SS Central Security Service, an organization was created and most of its main posts were held by Roman Catholic priests wearing the black uniform of the Nazi SS. The Jesuit priest, quote-unquote, Father Himmler, which is, which is the uncle of Heinrich Himmler, was one of its superior officers, unquote. And the next quote continues on the same person on page 168, on the secret history of the Jesuits. Quote, Kurt Heinrich, Heinrich Himmler, or Kurt Heinrich Himmler, was chief of the Gestapo, that is a secret police force of the German Nazi state, which meant he held in his hand the essential reins of the power of the Nazi regime. Was it his personal merits which earned him such a high position? Did Hitler see in him a superior genius when he compared him Heinrich Himmler, to the creator of the Jesuit order, Ignatius of Loyola, as we have learned, learned before? It is certainly not what the testimonies of those who knew him imply, imply, as they saw in him nothing more than mediocrity. Was that star of Heinrich Himmler shining with a borrowed brightness? Was it really Kurt Heinrich Himmler, the ostensible, i.e. apparent chief who actually reigned over the Gestapo and the secret services, who was sending millions of people deported for political reasons and, uh, and Jews to their death? Was it the flat-faced nephew or was it the Jesuit priest uncle, the former canon at the court of Bavaria, one of Jesuit superior general Ledokowski's favorites, a Jesuit father and superior officer of the Nazi SS? Question mark. Edmund Paris ends the quote. When thousands of German anti-Nazis were tortured to death in Hitler's concentration camps, when the Polish intelligentsia was slaughtered, when hundreds of thousands of Russians died as the result of being treated as Slavic Untermenschen, which is subhumans, and when six million human beings were murdered for being non-Aryan, Roman Catholic Church officials in Germany bolstered the Nazi regime perpetrating these crimes. The Pope in Rome, and we are speaking here about Pope Pius XII, Eugenio Pacelli, who was the nuncio to Germany from 1917 on, and signed with Knight of Malta Franz von Papen the Concordat on the 20th of July of 1933 and is also Hitler's Pope and quotes from the book of the same name will come in a few moments me reading this year. 
The Pope in Rome, i.e. Pius XII, Eugenie Pocelli, the spiritual head and supreme moral teacher of the Roman Catholic Church, remained silent. In the face of these greatest of moral depravities which mankind has been forced to witness in recent centuries, the moral teachings of a church allegedly dedicated to love and charity, listen to Pope Francis today, could be heard in no other form but vague generalities. Unquote. And this quote comes from Günther Liewe, The Catholic Church in, and Nazi Germany, published 1964, page 341. And from the same book on page 287 we read, quote, German soldiers returning from the Eastern Front were telling horrible stories how in occupied Russia Jewish civilians, men, women and children were being lined up and machine gunned by the thousands. In the spring of 1942 the leaflets of the White Rose composed by a group of students and a professor of philosophy at the University of Munich told of the murder of 300,000 Jews in Poland and asked why the German people remained so apathetic in the face of these revolting times. End quote. Now I just mentioned here in the spring of 1942 leaflets from the White Rose. If you want to know want to know any more about that, we are dealing here with the siblings Scholl. I did a broadcast some time ago on Hour of the Truth uh, with the title The White Rose. So look that up and you will learn much about those. Sophie Scholl, who was the initiator of that resistance group, small studental, studentical resistance group in Germany, who was uh, um, responsible for the leaflets, the flyers they made, got decapitalized. Yeah? Beheaded. And where in the Book of the Lord do we read of beheadings? That was not a normal method for a death sentence carried out in Germany in the Third Reich, in the Nazi Reich. But she was beheaded. Look it up. Hour of the Truth, the White Rose. Very interesting broadcast. So then we come to the same author again and the same book on page 321 read, quote, this concealment of the truth concerning Roman Catholic Church cooperation with the Nazi regime has been so bold and successful that in Germany not a single Roman Catholic bishop had to resign his office because of his cooperation with the Nazis during World War II. Not one single Roman Catholic bishop had to resign office. Quite the contrary, Bishop Burning, who had served until the downfall of Hitler in Göring's Prussian State Council in 1949, was given the honorary title of Archbishop. Herr Franz von Papen, who helped put Hitler into power, and who negotiated the concordat between the Vatican and Nazi Germany in 1933, as I already told you, was made Papal Privy Chamberlain in 1959. Such rewards for men deeply involved with the Nazi regime represent a mockery of the true heroic figures who died fighting Hitler." Unquote. And from John Cornwell, Roman Catholic historian and journalist in his book Hitler's Pope, The Secret History of Pope Pius XII, from 1999, page 199, you know, Hitler's Pope, the book I just mentioned a few minutes before, we read the following, quote, Without the deadening hand of Vatican control, resistance might have been multiplied across the country, meaning Nazi Germany during World War II, from the outset. And had Roman Catholic officialdom from the outset not turned a blind eye to the expanding anti-Semitic propaganda and persecution, the terrible disaster that befell the Jews might never have occurred." Unquote. And from the same book, page 280, we read, 
practically every right-wing dictator of the period, meaning Europe during World War II, had been born and brought up a Roman Catholic, notably Hitler, Franco, Pétain, Mussolini, Pavelic and Tiso, who was a Catholic priest. But also, unquote, but also I have to insert here, on the left wing. And I only mention here Stalin, who was a Jesuit priest, educated by the Jesuits in Georgia. They always control both sides. And now a quote that you've maybe heard before from the Civilta Cattolica, the house organ of the Jesuits. Quote, Fascism is the regime that corresponds most closely to the concepts of the Church of Rome. Unquote. Well then, we seem to have a well-documented history that, first, the Roman Catholic Church has been slaughtering Jews from at least the time of the early Crusades, at least, if not before. Second, the Roman Catholic Church launched a Holy Inquisition that initially targeted many Jews in Spain. Third, the Roman Catholic Church was heavily involved in supporting Nazi Germany and other fascist regimes in Europe during World War II at a time when up to 6 million Jews were being exterminated by these Roman Catholic Church-supported murdering regimes. Let us remember that much of the alternative media tells us that the quote-unquote Masonic Zionist Jews, oh, the evil Jews, are running the New World Order. Much of the alternative media also tells us that these Masonic Zionist Jews are running Hollywood and the mainstream media. And of course, everybody who follows Hour of the Truth knows that this is a blatant lie and I don't even have to go into it. But if these Masonic Zionist Jews are really running Hollywood and the mainstream media, then why in blazes aren't CNN, Fox, ABC, NBC and CBS telling us the whole story about Roman Catholic heavy-duty involvement in fomenting World War II, helping to bring Hitler to power, filling key positions in the Nazi SS, supporting numerous fascist regimes in Europe during World War II, orchestrating the Vatican's Holocaust in Croatia, and helping fascist war criminals escape at the end of World War II via the Vatican Red Lines and Operation Paperclip. Why isn't Hollywood producing numerous movies to show us all the facts that tie the Roman Catholic Church directly into a brutal genocide against Jews and Christians in Europe during World War II? After all, we've seen from the numerous quotations in this article alone that the Roman Catholic Church has been the greatest enemy the Jews have ever seen, especially in the past thousand plus years. Again, I must ask, if the quote-unquote Masonic Zionist Jews are controlling the mainstream media and Hollywood in America, then why in blazes aren't they exposing this greatest enemy of the Jews, the Roman Catholic Church? Why? 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 Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why this isn't happening. It is because the quote-unquote Masonic Zionist Jews are not in charge. Oh yes, they hold some mid-level management positions within the New World Order to include some positions inside Hollywood and America's mainstream media, and even a couple high-level management positions. However, they are not N-O-T. They are not the top player in the New World Order, which is nothing else than the Old World Order Restored. Let's get that right from the get-go. The real controllers who operate in the shadows and behind the scenes are the secret societies such as the Jesuit Order, its Knights of Malta and the top levels of Jesuit-controlled Freemasonry. They direct and steer the mid-level managers. 
Some folks in the alternative media love to point out that the Jewish B'nai B'rith is a Masonic organization. And it indeed is. But who runs Freemasonry? Please consider the following quotes. If you trace up Masonry through all its orders till you come to the grand tip-top head Mason of the world, you will discover that the dread individual and the chief of the Society of Jesus are one and the same person. James Parton, an American historian. And if I'm not mistaken, even Petrona Helena Blavatsky wrote this in one of her writings. I'm repeating this once again, that everybody without a doubt knows what Freemasonry, whom Freemasonry really serves. If you trace up Masonry through all its orders, till you come to the grand tip-top, Head Mason of the world, you will discover that the dread individual and the chief of the Society of Jesus, the Black Pope, the superior general of the Jesuit order, are one and the same person. And also we read this in the next quote. This inner and invisible Freemasonry is international in extent. In extent. And it is within the inner circle that the Jesuits conceal themselves, work and mastermind the projects that suit their goals. This quote comes from John Daniel. He is the author of the book The Grand Design Exposed, published in 1999 on page 170. But here I have to go into a little bit more explanation. That is very, very important to me. Please go to Jesse Vessel, his YouTube channel, and the link I will provide in the description box of this video, where he reads that book right now. Support those readings and channels like Jesse Vessel and also Brett Norman by subscribing to their channels, like their videos and share the information they freely give to all of us. Expose the Roman Catholic Church for what it really is, the synagogue of Satan, the seat of the Antichrist of the Bible, the place where the son of perdition, the man of sin resides for all to see. Get the word of God out. Scream the truth from the rooftops using social media you're involved in. Re-upload our videos, mine, Jesse's, Brett's, to your channel. Comment on every video you watch on the truth you find in there or expose the errors when you spot false teachings. God needs you. He does not want any man to perish, no matter the race or belief system they are in. If they do not have the knowledge of Jesus Christ of the Bible, they are lost. And it is our responsibility as the body of Christ here on earth to wake them up and get them saved. There are no excuses for not telling the truth. Please, get the truth out. Time is running out. Satan knows he only has a small time, a little time, here in the world left. What do you know where all this inventions all of a sudden comes from, where all this progression that we make the last 100 years on a technical basis, on on the basis of pharmacy and I don't know all that stuff. I mean, pharmacy is one big scam. I know, I know that. But people think that we are very advanced in there. Well, we, we have now 27, uh, 2016 and, and, and uh, a little bit more than 100 years ago it wasn't even possible to fly a plane. And look at what we're doing today. Why do you think this progress is all of a sudden within the last hundred and years with such huge, such gigantic steps? Because Satan knows his time is running out. 
Therefore, we need the people of God to spread the truth all over the world. And sadly, sadly, there are very, very, very few people who teach the real truth of the Bible, of the real, of the uncorrupted Bible, without any personal interpretation. I only know three persons in my life who are that way. Tom Fress from Inquisition Update, Jesse Vessel and Brett Norman from their respective YouTube channel. They are people who really tell the unbridled truth, no matter what. If I belong in that row, I think so, but it's not on me to judge that. I leave that up to my listeners, to my viewers, and I leave that up to my brethren, and I leave that up for God, because He will judge me in the end. I have no agenda but the truth, and these people, Tom, Jesse, and Brett, don't have anything else but that agenda to be put out. And we have to support them in every step they are doing to put it out to the masses. And by the way, I started a Vimeo channel some time ago. I can only upload two videos a week because otherwise I have to pay for that stuff and I don't do that. But I'm uploading all the readings of Tom Fress of the Global Vatican to my Vimeo channel. And I'll put the, the, the link into the description box of this video that you can bookmark it and can have a look at it. And you can go whether to my Vimeo channel and listen to Tom Fress's reading of the Global Vatican or you can go to First Amendment Radio, his YouTube channel, or First Amendment Radio on the internet and uh, support the channel and go into the archives yourself because you paid for it. And then you get access to it and listen, and listen to the Global Vatican and the other readings Tom Fress did there. That is the truth that needs to be getting out, people. And I think it was appropriate to mention that right here when I mentioned John Daniel and the book Grand Design Exposed because Jesse is doing a very, very good work reading that book right now. I think he's now at chapter 6 or chapter 7, whatever. Somewhere quite in the beginning, I think, because I think it's a 300 and something page book. But he will read not all the book, I think, but a big part of that book. So please support him, visit his channel, watch his videos, like them, share them, re-upload them and do the same with the work that Brad Norman does. Another quote from John Daniel's book, The Grand Design Exposed, pages 212 to 213, we will continue, quote, without exception, without exception, every chief actor in the French Revolution of 1789 through 1799 was either Jesuit educated was a Roman Catholic prelate or a member of the Illuminati, which is also a Jesuit front organization. And you know that, my dear listeners, when you followed my book reading of Rulers of Evil, where I explicitly said that Adam Weishaupt founded the Bavarian Illuminati in 1776, May 1st, Labor Day, eh? <laughs> as a front organization for the at that time banished Jesuit order, which was all a scam by Lorenzo Ricci to secularize the order that now we have them here over in swarms as doctors, lawyers, bankers, professors, teachers, editors, whatever, in every profession you can think of. And you don't know if there's a Jesuit behind it because he doesn't wear his Jesuit uniform. or a member of the Illuminati Order, which is just another Jesuit front organization, where within the Jacobin Club they would come together to conspire and carry out the great work, which in the open system of the Jacobins was the reflection of the complete hidden system of the Illuminati, and in back of the Illuminati were the hidden Jesuit masters. End of quote from John Daniel's book, The Grand Design Exposed. Now we go to the beginning of that book, page 9, and we read, quote, 
There are other secret and semi-secret organizations such as the International Bankers, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, the Club of Rome, the Trilateral Commission, the New Age Movement, the Illuminati and Freemasonry who are all deeply involved in global politics and who actively promote the uniting of the people of our planet <coughs> I changed that reading into and who actively promote the uniting of the people on God's earth under a new world order. I do not agree that it is first of all the earth is not a planet and second of all it's not ours. It's God's and it is his earth. But continue in the quote. However, these all are but mere front organizations behind which the true source of power, the Jesuit order, hides and uses them to distribute and channel its designs. And, as in any conspiracy, secrecy and shifting attention and blame away from itself is paramount to its success." Unquote. So we've come almost to the end. But the author says here, I highly recommend that you read John Daniel's book, The Grand Design Exposed. And, you know, I advised you to that earlier, and I still do. So, I embraced Daryl Eberhardt <coughs> to write in here that he highly recommends that you read John Daniel's book, The Grand Design Exposed. His 411-page paperback book makes a compelling case that the Roman Catholic Jesuit order took over the top levels of British and French Freemasonry. Well, someone may now ask, didn't the mainstream media expose some of the horrible pedophilia in the Roman Catholic Church? Yes, they did. But how could they not help to do so, since so much information was leaking out about it through numerous sources, such as many local newspapers? They simply reported what was necessary to show that they were aware of the problem and so that they would not lose total credibility with the American people. You know, when in the mainstream media you read something about the pedophile child abuse of the Roman Catholic Church, like even wasn't it last year they brought this movie out uh, based on the Boston Globe? Uh, what's what's this name? I, I I saw that movie. I I I don't know anymore. Anyway, you can look that up uh, when you when you Google Boston Globe and uh, this conspiracy thing. And um, that was a movie with Michael Keaton. And there they exposed the child abuse and Boston over the years. So what? Did it stop? Did they accuse the Roman Catholic Church? Did they bring them to court? Did they put the priests behind bars? No. And why not? Because they don't have jurisdiction. They can't even if they'd like to. And they don't like to because they are all on the top, controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. Miranda Prosos. Inter Mirifica. Read these Roman Catholic documents or go turn to my reading of Rulers of Evil, chapter 9, where I mentioned it. I went much deeper in it when I translated my summary of Rulers of Evil into German, Herrscher des Bösen, in part, um, part 4, where I read chapter 9, and I went very, very deep and, and read two, these two documents, uh, both of them completely, and, under, uh, and uh, explained them. But you can do that for yourself. Do your own research, because what I say you don't believe anyway. You're going to attack me for this, because I defend the Jews here, probably. I defend every man, every creature of God. No matter his belief system, or his race, his color, or whatever, or his language, or whatever. We are all created by God. Some have found him, some have not. I'm here to help you find him, if you have not. Jews are betrayed. The Pharisees of the time of Jesus were betrayed. The Nicolaitans that he talked about in Revelation 1, that he hated, were betrayed 
because he didn't hate the Nicolaitans. He hated their deeds. I hate the deeds of the Jews. I hate the deeds of all the Gentiles in the Roman Catholic Church, of all the black men, yellow men, red men, black men, white men, everywhere. Their deeds I hate, but not the people. And why they are doing these deeds? Because they are possessed of another spirit, which is not the Holy Spirit. And that is why they do not know. So at least give them a chance to know. I mean, when you go into the music industry and you speak about, oh, Michael Jackson, he was an Illuminati puppet and everything else. Yeah, wonderful. What chance did Michael Jackson ever have in his life? to discover the real truth and the true word of God, being born into that satanic family from the beginning. Did he have a chance? Did he have a choice? So many people, do they have a choice? When we discovered the truth by reading and understanding the word of God and accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are so blessed. Uh, we should share that blessing with everyone. Of course you cannot turn everyone. Try once. And when rejected, try another one time. And when they're rejected then, let them go. You can't convict ev can't convince everyone. But at least try. And with all the information that we have for the moment out there on the internet, because this won't stay that way we have to use every moment because when satan's time is running out he will make sure our time of communicating researching is running out too he is the only adversary we have through his agents on this earth, the Antichrist, the Roman Catholic Church and every organization affiliated to it. Jesuits, Papal Knights, Freemasonry, every secret society, I don't care. All of them, they are working for him. All we can do is expose them and that's why I'm doing this here. Okay, I will continue in the text. They simply reported what was necessary to show that they were aware of the problem and so that they would not lose total credibility with the American people. The last paragraph ended on the Roman Catholic Church. Why are the mainstream media not putting out the pedophile um, uh, the pedophile agenda of the Roman Catholic Church. No, the Masonic Zionist Jews do not control Hollywood or the mainstream media in America and in the whole world for that matter. They do not control international banking, although there are some wealthy Jews involved, probably you all know the Rothschilds, who are the guardians of the Vatican treasure according to the Jewish Encyclopedia itself and according to the pictures that you can find of Maya Amschel Rothschild wearing a Knight of Malta cross. The International Intelligence Community or the New World Order itself. The Jesuit Order which controls the Vatican, the wealthy and powerful Knights of Malta and the top levels of Freemasonry is the top player on the world's geopolitical, financial, religious chessboard. The following famous men warned us about the Jesuit order. Samuel F. B. Morse lived from 1791 through 1872, the American inventor of the telegraph and the Morse code. Quote, they, the Jesuits, are a secret society a sort of Masonic order with super-added features of revolting odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous. 
They are not merely priests or priests of one religious creed. They are merchants and lawyers and editors and men of any profession having no outward badge in this country, the USA, by which to be recognized. They are about in all your society. They, the Jesuits, are educated men, prepared and sworn to start at any moment and in any direction and for any service commanded by the general of their order, the Jesuit general superior, the black pope, bound to no family, bound to no community, nor country, by the ordinary ties which bind men, and sold for life to the cause of the Roman pontiff, the Antichrist, I might add here. Unquote. And from John Adams in a letter from 1816 to Thomas Jefferson, John Adams' second American president, we read, quote, My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities is very particular and very horrible. Their restoration, meaning the Jesuits' reinstatement as a religious order by Pope Pius VII in 1814, their restoration is indeed a step toward darkness. Cruelty, perfidy, despotism and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is this society of Loyola's. R. W. Thompson, ex-secretary of the American Navy and author of the book Footprints of the Jesuits, wrote, quote, The Jesuits are the deadly enemies of civil and religious liberty. Unquote. And from Marquis de Lafayette, who lived from 1757 through 1834, was a French statesman and general, quote, it is my opinion that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed, it will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests, for they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe. Unquote. Now we come to a few added notes the author does here. Uh, which he added to this email or this uh, open letter in Octo uh, October 20th, 2007. And we are nearly to the end. Nothing much has changed with that large section of the so-called alternative media that likes to blame the Jews for two world wars and for allegedly running the new world order. They continue to ignore tons of historical evidence that clearly shows that the Vatican Papacy Jesuit Knights of Malta Cabal was the fomenter of those two world wars and is the number one player on the New World Order chessboard. Please do some research about this wealthy and powerful Vatican Papacy Jesuit Knights of Malta Cabal. Please obtain as many as you can afford and then share them with others. And here are some other websites that contain important information about the Vatican Papacy Jesuit Knights of Malta Cabal. And I will try to list as many as I can remember. Some of them have articles that deal with this cabal and others have broadcast or podcast interviews of folks who have written about this cabal. And some of them recommended other sources for further research on this wealthy and powerful cabal. First, ctwilcox.com, Canadian actor and author, C.T. Wilcox's website, I highly recommend that you purchase a copy of his 345-page paperback book, The Transformation of the Republic. And I, Jörg, endorse Daryl Eberhardt in this point, absolutely. Second, arcticbeacon.com, which is a broadcast from host Greg Szymanski uh, on, on his website. And therefore, you can also go to firstamendmentradio.com, uh, where... Greg Semensky is um, broadcasting regularly. Third, GardenComstock.com. Four, Visigoth.com. Five, VaticanAssassins.org. 
author Eric John Phelps' website and he says, I recommend that you purchase a copy of his uh, CD-ROM Vatican Assassins. And I have to add, but do not fall into his false biblical teachings. His book, Vatican Assassins, um, what is it? Uh, Murder in the House of My Friends, something, the undertitle. Um, his book is a great study of omitted history, absolutely. But his Bible teachings are futurist. Watch my video on the playlist Nothing But The Truth and Hour Of The Truth on that subject because I did at least two broadcasts where I mentioned Eric John Phelps. I don't go further into that. Um, he's a betrayed brother. Uh, yeah, not so much a brother because he is not so much betrayed because he is controlled opposition. That means he's working for the other side and he knows that he is. But that's all that I say for that and for the rest do your own research. But the book he wrote... The history facts that he put in there, the links he put in there, that is trustable. That is really, really good exposing work. It's because of the other things that he does that he is allowed to do this. That is something you have to get. Eat the meat and spill out the bones. Also go to the website vaticandesignexposed.com from author John Daniels. Um, of the Grand Design Exposed website. And of course, uh, he said already, he recommends that you uh, read the book, The Grand Design Exposed. And also, you have to be careful with uh, John Daniels in the same point that you have to be with Eric John Phelps on biblical teaching. Seven, BereanBeacon.org, author Richard Bennett's website. Daryl Eberhardt recommends that you purchase a copy of his 58-minute color DVD, The Inquisition. And I recommend to you, very, very, very emphasizing recommend to you, watch his video on YouTube called Vatican Control Through Civil Law. Highly recommended. You will really have a wonderful understanding. BereanBeacon.org and Richard Bennett is a former, I think, 22 years or something he was in the Roman Catholic Church because before God opened his eyes, he's a wonderful man and a wonderful teacher on biblical history and on biblical facts. And go to chick.com, Chick Publications website. I recommend that you buy the book The Secret History of the Jesuits by Edmund Paris and the book Smoke Screens from Jack Chick and you can get these on the website chick.com. Also, he recommends White Horse Media, Steve Wolberg's website, and he recommends the book End Time Delusions. The above websites are not listed in any particular order, and my inclusion of each of them does not mean that I agree necessarily with everything that may be posted on that particular website, and that is also the case for me, Jörg. The websites are wonderful starts to begin research and do research, and read books and watch videos but you have to use your own discernment by holding everything that is taught there against the word of God. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. If I have forgotten he continues to list a good website of which I am aware that deals with the Vatican Papacy Jesuit Knights of Malta Cabal or if I do not personally know of a particularly good website that deals with this cabal and thus fail to list it, then please forgive me. And please do make good use of all the above listed websites while they are still there. A very important point that I made a little earlier, right? That they are hopefully still there. His website, Daryl Eberhardt, already is gone. So he is not just saying this. The fact that I found this on another website and read this to you and his website is gone is proof that we are not conspiracy theorists but telling you the truth. Powerful people want desperately to control the internet and they will no doubt soon move to do so. Also make sure to visit the website The Unhived Mind and the website Spiritually Smart where I got this document from, by the way. And for more information, and not to forget, a wonderful website, bibliothecaplayartis.net. Lastly, I would like you to consider the following Bible verse, and a request from me, Daryl. Quote, 
who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? End quote. Psalm 94, verse 16. Please print off copies of this article and give them to others. The truth about who is really running America must be told to the American people. Who is really running the world must be told to the American people and to the peoples of the whole earth, I add here. And you can spread this because the link to the article from spiritually.com is provided in the description box of the video. Well, Daryl says, and I absolutely put myself in the same I here, so when I read I, you can understand that as Daryl Eberhardt and me together. I hope that the above information proves helpful. Again, the American people and the people worldwide must be told who really is the top player on the geopolitical and financial scene today. Ephesians 5 verse 11 quote, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Unquote. And Ezekiel 22 verse 30 quote, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Unquote. This was another show of Hour of the Truth from YouTube channel Jockler 66. Quite intense and sometimes I'm getting carried a little away but I can't help it because I am so passionate for my Lord Jesus Christ. It is simply amazing. Until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.